Good afternoon. My name is Susan Ainsworth and on behalf of Fiona Russell, Anna Ryan, Catherine Stock and myself, I'd like to present our 2017 Academic Women in Leadership project, which we've titled Everyone's Responsibility, which addresses the potential for bystander intervention at the University of Melbourne. When we considered the Change the Course report into sexual harassment and sexual assault on Australian university campuses, and were asked to contribute to the University of Melbourne response. We asked ourselves, who's responsible for changing the situation? And we decided that everyone was responsible, every single member of the university community. We chose to focus on bystander intervention because it was one of the few approaches to addressing sexual harassment and sexual assault that had a role for everyone that was both practical, provided for an immediate response, and promoted broader cultural change about gender-based violence. In defining this work, we spent time trying to understand the people and groups involved and the impact of sexual assault and harassment on them, as well as the attitudes that we find in our society. We also looked for successful campaigns where people had stepped up to speak out against wrong or criminal behaviour. Finally, we had a look at the University of Melbourne itself and asked ourselves, what are our cultural values? Who do we aspire to be? Sexual assault and sexual harassment is not an isolated issue. It is a community problem requiring a community response, including the victim and perpetrator. There may be witnesses to the situation and in turn, family and friends impacted while the community is called to an immediate response via the health, legal and police services. From a University of Melbourne perspective, we also have involvement via our colleges, the broader university community, including societies, sports and unions, as well as institutions which feed students into the university. Further afield, again, we are in a part of the city community, a sector community, i.e. the Universities Australia, and the public transport system, which is integral to our functioning. Each of us brings a perspective as well as a role to play in tackling sexual assault and sexual harassment on campus. Looking at the attitudes of society, each member of our community is also holding on to preconceived attitudes towards sexual assault and sexual harassment, whether it is that of the perpetrator taking what they perceive to be freely available, or the victim feeling to blame, embarrassed or afraid of consequences. Our bystanders often feel helpless without the tools and training to help if they notice the situation at all. And in the broader community, we still often hear excuses for poor behaviour, which begs the question, who do we want to be? What are the cultural values of our university? And are there any examples of where this has worked before? We can look at successful campaigns, and it has been done before. In Australia, we have models of successful campaigns asking the community to step up and speak out when they observe criminal or dangerous behaviour. And at the University of Melbourne, we have cultural values. Our Growing Esteem campaign has clearly stated a desire to lead not only in research, and teaching, but also we've said we aspire to a strengthened connection to our many communities. We have also a clearly defined set of attributes which we want our graduates to embody. Alongside academic excellence, these include being socially responsible, active citizens, and people of integrity and self-awareness. All of these attributes speak to a graduate who will stand up and speak out against sexual assault and sexual harassment where they see it. So how do we shift our culture? Imagine if everyone in our community took responsibility to end sexual assault and sexual harassment. To help you picture what this might look like, we'd like to show you a short video clip of student leaders from Rutgers University in New Jersey. Rutgers is a campus where everyone deserves to be safe, to study, work, and have fun. Where we all take care of and support each other. Where sexual and relationship violence doesn't exist. We all need to work together and take a stand against harmful attitudes and behaviors. When we are in a situation we know is not right, we have a choice. We don't ignore what is happening. We choose to be positive, active bystanders. When we hear something that is a red flag, we say something. Our language matters. When we see something suspicious, we ask for help because there's strength in numbers. 
We try whatever we can think of, as long as it's safe and doesn't harm anyone else. It only takes two seconds to ask someone if they're okay. Two seconds can change a life. We can be a part of the revolution with our words and actions. We will help when others don't know what to do. We will believe and support survivors. We will say something. We will do something. You will too. Because we are a community that cares. And we are in this together. Bystanders are those who, while not directly involved, are present and therefore observe concerning incidents and behavior. Within the literature, further distinctions are sometimes made between passive and pro-social or active bystanders, thus distinguishing between those who observe violence, discrimination or offensive behaviour and take no action versus those who intervene. A striking feature of the Change the Course report was the lack of bystander response to sexual assault and sexual harassment. Nationally, 25% of students witnessed another student being sexually harassed at university and 1.1% of students witnessed another student being sexually assaulted. But only a small proportion of those, 21 and 37% respectively, took action in response to the incident. At the University of Melbourne, the proportion of students witnessing these incidents was even higher. 29% of University of Melbourne students witnessed sexual harassment and 1.6% witnessed sexual assault at university. Given these statistics, activating bystanders to respond to these incidents could have a tangible impact on preventing sexual harassment and sexual assault and or supporting the victims exposed to these crimes in our community. Bystander intervention is an approach to prevent violence and support those who are the targets of violence. Theories of bystander intervention have been developed within fields such as criminology and psychology, and more recent work has focused on its potential to reduce sex-based violence, particularly against women. The immediate purpose of bystander intervention programs is to increase the likelihood that those who observe incidents will act when safe to do so by providing them with the knowledge, skills and confidence about what to do and how to do it. Many bystander programs are informed by Lante and Dali's model that outlines the steps involved in bystander activation. The first is noticing the situation. The second, interpreting the event as requiring intervention. The third, taking responsibility. The fourth, deciding how to help. And the fifth, acting. Our research indicates an effective bystander program should adopt a whole university approach to bystander intervention rather than just focusing on responses to critical incidents. We should implement an evidence-based program, but any program we adopt should be adapted specifically to the University of Melbourne culture, recognising that our students are from diverse backgrounds and cultures and all of these must be carefully considered. We should involve students in the design and local adaptation of the program. It should be delivered in person by trained facilitators, both male and female. It should involve activities at multiple levels rather than a one-off discrete training program and should be supported by a social media campaign, posters, multiple training sessions delivered in various formats and forms and mechanisms to embed a focus on gender-based respect in the day-to-day -day operations of the university. It should comprise a sequence of learning activities, including active learning experiences, which take participants from awareness raising to skill development in identifying incidents as requiring intervention and appropriate responses, to behavioural and attitudinal change, including how to intervene and knowing when it's safe to do so. It should be pilot tested, carefully monitored and evaluated using multiple outcome measures, not just incidents of violence, but also measures of behaviours, perceptions, knowledge and attitudes. Imagine if the University of Melbourne took a leadership role on this in our community. We've identified a number of strategic partners who are ready to stand up and stand together with the University of Melbourne. The colleges and halls of residence on campus are already undertaking activities and there are experts and providers such as Vic Health, Our Watch and Crime Stoppers who are willing to collaborate with us. Victoria University has taken the lead in our state in developing and implementing a culturally sensitive, multi-dimensional approach to bystander intervention 
that is based in strong local networks with its community partners and they're willing to share their experience with us. For us, the City of Melbourne would be a key local community partner. As staff members within the Academic Women in Leadership program, we thank the University for supporting our professional development through participation in this program and for the opportunity to contribute to this important issue. However, sexual harassment and sexual assault are not just women's responsibility, they are issues for society as a whole. This is an opportunity for our university to make a real difference. We sincerely hope the university rises to the challenge of making this everyone's responsibility.